Hi, Case DeYoung with the Wilbur Ellis Company out in the Napa Orchard again outside of Sparta, Michigan. We're in Josh Morris's orchard and we happen to be standing in a block of ginger golds. Today we're going to cover a couple different topics in some detail. First, we're going to start out with uh, showing you Josh trimming some of his baby trees he just planted here in our last video segment. We'll follow those through the years, the different uh, strategies to use to train the trees and fertilize and, and trim them. And then uh, we're going to primarily spend most of our time today on covering the growth stage of, that the apples are in now, the tight cluster. We're going to look at some lighter reds and we'll look at these ginger golds. So right now, let's go to the clip on Josh uh, trimming the apple trees. Okay, so Josh is going to trim these Johnna Golds that are on Nick 29, about 660 trees an acre. And just remember, for every guy with a set of nippers in his hands, there's a different way to trim the tree. So uh, I'll start with this kind of ugly one that needs some branching, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Go ahead, Josh. Take a heading cut, kind of get that force that thing to grow a little bit. Clean it up and reduce some of that competition there. A little Dutch cut, get something to sprout from that. Now th this is the fun one here because you got all these nice branches, but they're all down there below his knee. He'll probably take a measurement here with that uh, right on cue. Look at that. So. Kind of leave some of his main scaffold limbs there, a little fruit and wood, and cut back to a side bud. Generally, we try to come back to that north, excuse me, that southwest bud, so you get a branching into the, where we're more or less prevailing breeze is coming. Today it's coming right straight out of the west, but again, kind of get those lower limbs up off of off the ground so when he puts the trellis in there you can train them down to that wire and then uh, also keep them out of the way from getting the fruit banged with the sprayers and the mowers and stuff. So let's talk about some trellising here now. We've got a couple some rolls of high tensile wire being pulled down along these posts that were set here we showed before. The guys have come through and pre-drilled some holes for these two wires at the top. You see that one where the guys reaching there about six foot high maybe a little bit lower and we've got one closer to the top, but they'll come down through here, elevated platform, and be able to run that up. Um, you got the guy back there running those two reels so that, that this wire doesn't backlash, get kind of like a, like a string effect or a little slinky. Uh, a little braking system on the side you can just pick up in the corner of that video where um, that kind of holds that wire in there. And they get down to the other end of the um, trellis, the orchard, and they'll crimp on these wires here down there low where they don't have to stand up and reach up above their head or climb up on a ladder and uh, put a couple of good crimps on that high tensile fence and then run that up. He's tied that off the end of this one at the angle post that we've showed before, stapled on there with a couple of staples and a lot of times they'll back that up with another staple so that um, when that wire's tensioned it doesn't cut into the wood. And then um, come back to the other end, the loose end, they'll signal down to the guy on the other end and Tell him to go ahead, um, start ratcheting that up. He feeds the extra wire in there, tightens that wire up, not too tight. You don't want to have it sound like a, a guitar string where you can play on it or anything like that, but get up there so it's going to hold the wire, um, hold the trees. Uh, he'll come back later and they'll tie on individual bamboo poles up this, this so we got something to train that tree to and not cutting into it. But you can see he gets it pretty snug, um, tightens her up there pretty good so there's not going to be a lot of flopping. And be, like we said before, they kind of come back here and run a wire off that angled post that they've drove in down to these mobile hone screw and anchors. They'll come through with a little hydraulic motor and screw those anchors in there, then tie that wire off. Use these little grippers here, and I think they call them grip-ons. Just slide it in there and slide the wire in there once you've tightened her up a little bit, and then that'll hold that wire and keep it from slinking like that old uh, Chinese finger trick we used to use as a kid. All right, so let's talk about this tight cluster growth stage. Uh, there's a lot of confusion when you talk to uh, every person like we talked about with trimming here. It depends on what they call tight cluster. So my definition of that is once that little outside leaf, that mouse ear leaf has rolled back and you've got the flowers all clustered up there together, you go, it's not a point in time, it's a continuum if we can say it that way. You, you, uh, those leaves rolled back, we get past half inch green, we get in that point of tight cluster, you'll get extensions on the stems as they'll start to push out. The petals will start to push out of there a little bit. And you start seeing that pink on the end of that, where that, what's going to be that petal, what's going to be that flower. And then that cluster will open up, which we call open cluster, oddly enough. And then that king bloom flower will start to puff up and it'll get a, a puffy, almost like a, the size of a popcorn kernel. And then that's the next stage called uh, pink. A lot of guys, when you're having conversations with them and you're not standing in the orchard looking, they'll see that first pink flower in that cluster when it's still tight. 
They'll say, well, I'm at pink, I'm ready for insect control. You're a little early. So we want to make sure that we're, we're talking about the same thing. So how I define any growth stage is once I'm between 50 and 80 percent of all the clusters or all the flowers at that same stage, that's what I'm, that's what I'm defining as a stage, a growth stage. All right, well, so let's cover a little bit about foliar nutrition this time of year. This is a critical time of year to, well, for lots of different reasons. Uh, we've had, been going through a long, cold, damp, dark period, been cloudy. Uh, the foliage, as you can see in uh, the clips we've showed you already, is suffering a little bit, a little off-colored. So this is an excellent time of year to get a little bit of nitrogen and some mi uh, micro elements into the um, apple trees for a number of reasons. We, we got some zinc we need to get in there for pollen health. Boron's really important for reproduction. Nitrogen helps off with a little uh, frost protection. So one of the products we recommend a lot this time of year is our Moraleaf B, uh, B33. That's got a little bit of those nu nutrients in it. Uh, we run it at five pounds an acre. We try to get about 10 pounds out pre-bloom just to keep that zinc off that open bloom. And that's very critical labor later on as we'll dis uh, discuss about your calcium in the fruit throughout the season and at harvest time. So right now is a very important time to get that tree bulked up, these first fruit buds going, so that you can have a quality crop come harvest. All right, let's cover a little bit of insect control. It's still a little early for that. More of it's monitoring than anything else. Scouts are out setting traps for oriental fruit moth. They're setting up traps for codling moth. Some pheromone disruptions going out for both of those insects. Uh, most of our scouts are out looking for European red mite eggs, kind of determine what kind of mite control we're going to need later on. We've got a few aphids out there, though again it's still early, it's a little cool, it's been kind of damp, That's, all that progress has been a little slow, but we're getting ready for the big push. Uh, if you've got a block that has head problems with the oblique banded leaf roller, now's a real good time to look for that instar, the overwinter second, third instars, a little larvae yet, but uh, easy to find if you know what you're looking for. So we will ramp up and really start insect controls here, uh, probably in our next clip, but at that pink stage of growth. And that way we can go ahead and uh, set ourselves up for the bloom period and then come back with our petal falls and first cover sprays. Now, let's talk about diseases. Diseases is a real prime mover of what the skies are spraying for this time of year. Apple scab is a big deal here in Michigan and powdery mildew. So, we're out here on a regular basis, keeping the fungicide on this new foliage that you see, trying to keep that covered up so we don't get scab infections on that. We're monitoring the weather, we're watching the, the, how long it's wet, you know, when can you get in a spray. There's not a lot of protection offered from the wind as you can probably pick up with a microphone here, trying to get spray coverage. And last but not least, and we'll go to this clip here of the wood rot diseases, we've got a, quite a broad complex of wood rots. Um, depending on which lab you send them to and how well they are, how good they are at isolating those. But uh, you get Lacostoma canker, you get Nicteria twig blight, you get some black rots and a whole host of other diseases, but uh, kind of a, uh, they can get in through whether you've somehow wounded the bark through pruning, through uh, a fire blight, cold damage. The nice thing about those, that there is a nice thing about those wood rot diseases, it takes them a long time to kill the tree. So we've got plenty of time to get out there and do something about it. Unfortunately, for the commercial grower, the best control is sanitation, which means getting the thing out of the orchard, the diseased wood out of the orchard, and burning it. There's not really any kind of sprays or fungicides that do a great job to eradicate it, so this is a cultural practice for the most part. Okay, so let's kind of wrap it up here, here today. We've covered some trimming with Josh Morris in his orchard. We've been in a couple different spots looking at the growth stage tight cluster, what that looks like. Talked about some insect control and disease control, and then wrapped it up with some of these wood rots. So I'm Case DeYoung with the Wilbur Ellis Company, outstanding in my field in Sparta, Michigan.